We have come to our lecture 7 in the Z-Sectiona series on electrical services and illumination, building services number 2, 18 ARC 5.3. Uh, so, we have, we are in module 2, subheading 2, where we will be seeing about uh, introduction to renewable energy systems, on-site and off-site, under which we will have to know about solar, wind, biomass, achieving net zero building design through utilization of the above natural resources. And this module ends with energy conservation techniques in electrical systems. So, in the previous chapter, we have <coughs> studied about uh, what happens with uh, the uh, internal electrical distribution within a building and uh, or a commercial industry uh, complex. So, we started with uh, generation, transmission, distribution and uh, we uh, reached a point where the electric electricity reaches the uh, <coughs> you know campus and what happens inside a campus and vertical and horizontal distribution inside our premises. Right. So, in this module, we will have to see about the renewable energy systems and I am going to have this as the approach where we break this module into two headings where uh, we will start with introduction to renewable energy systems both on-site and off-site and uh, which we will discuss about the types of uh, energy systems and <coughs> we will see if we can take the net zero building design also through this module. Uh, through this first uh, uh, segment or first session and later in the next session we will try to cover the energy conservation techniques in electrical systems. Moving on, what is renewable energy sources? So, most of us have a vague idea or our own understanding of uh, renewable energy sources, but to put it very simple or put give it a definition, energy sources that are part of the planet's physical structure and that are being constantly renewed by natural means. So, that is where we get this name renewable energy sources. Whichever sources that is available as a part of our planet's physical structure and which is constantly getting renewed as well by natural means that is important. So, these energy sources are classified as renewable energy sources. What, what are these renewable energy sources? Like solar energy we have been <coughs> receiving solar energy in surplus so that qualifies as uh, uh, solar energy uh, sorry renewable energy systems then we have uh, wind as a good potential of uh, renewable energy system uh, geothermal sources hydroelectricity and there is a difference between hydroelectricity and electricity and the one which we get from ocean and lately we also have two more which is bioenergy and energy used uh, energy produced using hydrogen so we will have a look at all of this in this indian context we will have a quick look at this because as per our new ministry ministry of new and renewable energy uh, government of india we have all of these uh, classified in a, a different format so we will quickly have a look at that as well solar energy wind small hydro waste to energy bioenergy and also they have something called as new technologies under which we have hydrogen energy ocean energy geothermal energy and energy storage moving on uh, we will take each of these which is uh, discussed in the previous slide and try to understand them a bit in detail so sunlight <coughs> so we all know solar sunlight is a renewable source and it is most direct use is achieved by capturing the sun's energy. A variety of tapping the solar energy into light and uh, solar energy which is light and heat into electricity or for various other purposes as you could you must be already knowing are possible. Uh, we will just quickly read this out. A variety of solar energy technologies are used to convert the sun's energy and light into heat, illumination, hot water, electricity. Okay. Interestingly, we have some of the cooling systems. These systems, uh, even though it is about producing heat and light, it is also used for some cooling systems in large businesses and industries. So, what happens here is we must have seen this photovoltaic systems use solar cells to convert it. So, basically they tap the energy, store them and convert it into electricity. How? Because this is uh, DC, unidirectional. 
we use a solar inverter which converts this DC to AC according to our requirement. Solar hot water systems can be used to heat buildings by circulating water through flat plate solar collectors. If you have studied in your climatology or energy efficient buildings, uh, <coughs> there are flat plate solar collectors. So these hot water systems can be stored or uh, circulated through this flat plate solar collectors and it can be used to heat the buildings as well. Uh, mirror dishes that are focused to boil water in a conventional steam generator can produce electricity by concentrating the sun's heat. Commercial and industrial buildings can also leverage the sun's heat for a larger scale need such as HVAC. So this is corresponding to uh, where we have discussed about sun uh, energy is used uh, for cooling systems. So uh, <clears throat> by tapping these energies it is also used uh, in, in HVAC applications which is nothing but your heating, ventilation and air conditioning. And uh, lately but not uh, lastly but not the least. Uh, some thoughtful architectural design, the way it is oriented, the way it is uh, designed, the way so the architect designs uh, his or her uh, openings, it can passively take advantage of the sun as a source of light for heating or uncooling. Right? Moving on to the next slide, so what is wind? So we move on to the wind. Wind can be considered a form of solar energy because of the uneven heating and cooling of the atmospheric cause winds. So yeah, so this as in this definition we uh, we are considering wind as a form of solar energy but yeah technically it is uh, energy by itself. Uh, this is but uh, this is being caused with the uneven heating and cooling of the atmospheric cause winds because of the rotation of the earth and also because of other topographical factors. So this wind flow that is getting generated, the wind that is getting generated which is flowing through can be captured by wind turbines and converted into electricity. So commercial grade wind power generating systems are available to meet the renewable energy needs of many organizations. Commercial grade wind power generating systems which is a ready made uh, <coughs> uh, you know system gen power generation systems which are available to meet renewable energy needs accordingly. Single wind turbines can generate electricity to supplement an existing electrical supply. So uh, when you have the single wind turbines you have a main electrical system and whenever you can depend on this whenever the wind flow is good enough reliable enough we can use single wind turbines which can supplement our main uh, electrical supply. So when the wind blows power generated by the system goes to offset the need for utility supplied electricity. When the wind blows power generated by the syst uh, system goes and offsets the uh, other uh, utility supplied electricity. <coughs> Moving on further to the next uh, which is geothermal. Geothermal energy as uh, the word implies it is something which is under the ground it is something blue with the earth right. So it is derived from the heat of the earth. So this heat can be sourced close to the surface or from heated rock and reservoirs of hot water miles beneath our feet. So this heat, heat can be sourced close to the surface or from the heated rock or and reservoirs of the hot water miles beneath our feet. So it again depends upon the topography. Uh, in fact, <coughs> so geotechnological uh, surveys have to be conducted to understand what is lying with where, so where we can uh, tap heat which is available under our feet. So geothermal power plants harnesses these heat sources which is available under uh, the earth surface to generate electricity. On a much, much smaller scale, a geothermal heat pump can leverage the constant temperature of the ground found just 10 feet under the surface to help supply heat to a nearby building in the winter or to help cool it in the summer. <coughs> so we are talking about the consistency of the temperature of the ground found just uh, below, just 10 feet below the surface of the ground. Right. So geothermal energy can also be a part of the commercial utility energy solution on a larger scale or can be a sustainable uh, part of the sustainable practice on a local level. So it all depends upon the amount of heat or uh, heat that we have under the ground to extract and depending on that we can use this as a com part of the commercial utility energy solution uh, system or also as a part of the com sustainable practice on the on local level. So direct use of uh, some of the applications for direct use of geothermal 
energy may include heating office buildings and manufacturing plants because we are tapping heat and it can directly be used helping to grow greenhouse plants where they need uh, a, a warm ambient temperature to uh, promote the growth of these plants heating water at fish farms for a, a very similar to the previous one and aiding with various industrial processes so some example that is being given here is pasteurizing milk which does not require really uh, you know extreme uh, temperatures but f something that which can aid this industrial processes <coughs> just by directly uh, using the heat that we extract from the uh, from under the surface from the under the surface of the earth moving on to the next hydroelectricity hydroelectricity is something which we again might know the kinetic energy of the flowing rivers this is talking about the kinetic energy from the flowing rivers is captured in a much different way and converted into hydroelectricity probably the most familiar type of hydroelectric power is generated by a system where dams are constructed to store water in a reservoir which when released flows through turbines to product, produce electricity this is known as pumped storage hydropower where water is cycled between the lower and upper reservoirs to control the electricity generation between the times of low and peak demand so this is what we have been seeing in our dams and uh, majorly dams where we have lower and upper reservoirs and water is being cycled between them and this water is made to flow through uh, turbines which in turn helps uh, in converting this kinetic energy into electricity <coughs> electrical energy right so this is called pump storage hydropower so this is uh, something which most of us must have seen and there is one more type which is called as a run of river hydropower this funnels a portion of the river flow through a channel and does not require a dam hydropower plants can range in size from massive power projects such as hoover dam to micro hydroelectric power systems the direct use of hydroelectric power is naturally dependent on geographic location so one we use we store water we make them flow through turbines and we cycle the water from up to low low to uh, upper reservoirs and produce electricity other one is where we uh, <coughs> cut the uh, portion of a river flow through a channel and going to use it as a source for converting the movement of river to uh, which is kinetic energy to electrical energy so one is called as pump storage hydropower next is run of river hydropower moving on to the next slide so yeah so we have spoken about the uh, river and the moving water uh, as a source of producing electricity this slide we are talking about uh, renewable energy systems which is from ocean so there are two types of energy that can be produced by the ocean thermal energy from the sun's heat and mechanical energy from the motion of tides and waves so one is thermal energy from the sun's heat so this is again uh, dependent upon the sun's heat and the next one is mechanical energy from the motion of tides and waves so ocean thermal energy can be converted into electricity using a few different systems that rely on warm surface water temperatures so this relies upon warm surface on the of the uh, water temperatures which <coughs> is tapped and used uh, to produce electrical energy the next one is the ocean mechanical energy this is uh, again this is the one which is related to the motion of tides and waves ocean mechanical energy harnesses the ebbs and flows of tides caused by the rotation of the earth and the gravitational influence of the moon energy from wind driven waves can also be converted and used to help reduce one's electricity cost so we should remember one is ocean thermal energy which is due to the surface temperature of water uh, which is getting heated by the sun next is mechanical energy ocean mechanical energy that is due to the movement of tides and there are also fewer uh, lesser developed technologies in this case that leverage is ocean currents winds and uh, salinity salinity gradients as a source of power conversion cold ocean water from deep below the surface can be used to cool buildings with uh, another 
advantage here is there is a there, there is a byproduct which is a desalinated water which can be again used for various other purposes and uh, seaside communities so at least if not uh, drawing the water to the mainland completely seaside communities can employ the methods to tap natural ocean energy to supplement power and energy needs moving on to the next we have uh, biomass biomass uh, so till now whatever we have discussed is completely natural whereas uh, biomass and hydrogen uh, based renewable energy systems involves arti artificial processes as well right so biomass under biomass we are talking about bioenergy is a type of renewable energy derived from biomass to create heat and electricity or to produce liquid fuels such as ethanol biodiesel which can be used for transportation biomass refers to any organic matter coming from recently living plants or animals so we are talking about a basically a waste or a mass which is biologically created <coughs> to uh, which we are going to use as a source to produce heat or electricity or with various processes we are going to use these mass to produce liquid fuel such as uh, ethanol biodiesel which can be used for uh, which can be used for transportation even though this these bioenergy generates the same amount of carbon dioxide as fossil fuels so we are talking about biomass or biodiesel produced uh, and used for transportation which is going to uh, which is an alternative source of uh, fuel but it is going to produce the same amount of carbon dioxide as the uh, fossil fuels the difference that we should note here is the replacement plants are grown as biomass to remove an equal amount of co2 from the atmosphere so it is not that the graph is not going on to the depletion side forever but we are going we are releasing a several we are releasing several amount of carbon dioxide at the same time we have these plants growing on which is going to absorb some of the co2 so basically this is going to keep the environmental impact relatively neutral right so there are a variety of systems used to generate this type of electricity ranging from directly burning biomass to capturing and using methane gas produced by the natural decomposition of organic material so we have this uh, compost these days where uh, simple form to generate uh, many uh, you know if we have a setup it is it is of course not uh, as so uh, simple as we could think of but compared to the other sources or systems this is relatively simple where uh, some of us might be ha having uh, the vermi compost thing where we put our uh, uh, vegetables and uh, everyday waste into that for a period of uh, uh, two or three months and that becomes a, a manure for our uh, plants or garden right so that is uh, that is basically out of the biomass that we create on a regular basis so with that of course there are several processes where by storing it and when it undergoes a couple of uh, processes stages that becomes a good source for generating producing fuel as well right uh, if we can move on to the next which is based on hydrogen hydrogen is the simplest because it comprises one proton and one electron and the most abundant element in the universe yet it does not naturally occur as a gas on earth so it is found in organic compounds hydrocarbons such as gasoline natural gas methanol and propane and also in water hydrogen can be produced under certain conditions by some algae and bacteria using sunlight as an energy source so it is the simplest and most abundant element in the universe but it does not occur naturally as a gas so it has to be produced through several organic compounds and uh, also by several uh, certain conditions by some algae and bacteria where they use sunlight as an energy source so this hydrogen we know this uh, hydrogen in fact liquid hydrogen has been known to be a good fuel for our, uh, and it has been in use uh, since 1950s i remember studying in some of uh, dr kalam's books where uh, liquid hydrogen is going to be the future of uh, 
<coughs> you know propelling systems where it can cover uh, a more distance with very little uh, quantity so this is uh, hydrogen is high in energy it produces little or no pollution when burned and uh, liquid hydrogen has been used to launch uh, space shuttles and other rockets into orbit since the 1950s hydrogen self hydrogen fuel cells convert the potential chemical energy of hydrogen into electricity with pure water and heat as the only by products so hydrogen fuel cells convert the chemical energy of hydrogen into electricity and uh, when we do this it is interesting to note it produces pure water and heat as the only by products so the pollution here is relatively no or very little hydrogen fuel cells are used as an energy source where hydrogen and oxygen atoms are combined to generate electricity so where we so in terms of generating electricity with uh, hydrogen fuel cells where hydrogen and oxygen atoms are combined to produce electricity other practical applications for this type of renewable energy include large fuel cells providing emergency electricity for buildings and remote locations electric motor vehicles powered by hydrogen fuel cells and marine vehicle vessels powered by hydrogen fuel cells so other applications for this type of energy include fuel cells for this is a backup so they have large fuel cells which produce emergency electricity for buildings depending upon the typology of the buildings and uh, for remote locations it could be <coughs> uh, for military camps or uh, hospitals or even villages depending upon the size of the fuel cells electric motor vehicles these days some of some of them are fired with uh, or energized with hydrogen and fuel cells and also some of the marine vessels are powered with hydrogen fuel cells so this is about uh, types of uh, solar uh, sorry renewable energy sources i will quickly go to the indian government's website to know what they are talking about in the indian context so we are in the ministry of new and renewable energies website uh, we will just look at this so this is about the ministry uh, and it has got the hierarchy and this has got solar wind small hydro waste to energy bio energy Uh, new technology so we will just quickly run through these five or six of them so that we understand what's happening uh, in this front in our country's context so there are some facts over here the sun has been worshiped yeah uh, if we have to look at this about 5000 trillion kilowatt hour per year energy is incident over India's land area with most parts receiving 4 to 7 kilowatt per square meter per day so this is really huge that uh, in a land uh, like india in a vast land like india if we can harness this potential of uh, the amount of sun's radiations that we receive per day uh, we can literally run the entire country with just this so i just want you to imagine the potential of this form of energy the solar photovoltaics power can be effectively harnessed providing huge scalability in india and uh, okay so they have also said so theoretically a small fraction of the total incident solar energy if captured effectively can meet the entire country's power requirements so that is so convincing i hope Uh, we head towards that and uh, there has been a visible impact already so they speak about uh, uh, some of these facts and national institute of solar energy has assessed the country's solar potential of about 748 gigawatt assuming 3 percentage of the wastage land area to be covered by solar pv modules Solar energy has taken play, uh, central place in India's national action India's national action plan on climate change with national solar mission as one of the key missions uh, this national solar mission was launched on uh, 2020 2010 major initiative of the government of india active parts from states to promote ecological sustainable growth growth 
while addressing India's energy security challenges. So, and then they talk about the targets of this mission. Okay, so recently India achieved fifth global position in solar power deployment by surpassing Italy. Solar power capacity has increased by more than 11 times in the past five years from 2.6 gigawatt in March 2014 to 30 gigawatt in July 2019. Okay, so that is a good development to start with and this is where we have some of the data given by the government of India. So in Karnataka we have 7277.93 megawatt one of the leading uh, producers of solar energy in India. The adjacent states have 3000, 3000 and 142,800. Okay, so so Karnataka is one of the, like I told you, leading producers and, okay, so Karnataka is the leading producer of solar energy out of the Indian states followed by Rajasthan. So that means uh, in a place like Rajasthan which has got a couple of deserts, uh, more than Rajasthan we are still using this potential of solar energy <coughs> and uh, have installed convincingly you know good capacities in our state so which is good so moving on okay so okay so if you have to get from 2016 where Rajasthan was a leader followed by Gujarat and even Tamil Nadu was better at oh it is not better it is several times more than what Karnataka was producing but slowly so the government of Karnataka in just one year it drastically increase the capacity of solar power all right okay so now moving on to wind india's wind energy sector is led by indigenous wind power industry and has shown consistent progress the expansion has resulted in a strong ecosystem project operation capabilities and manufacturing base of about 10,000 megawatt per annum okay the country currently has a fourth highest wind ca installed capacity in the world with total installed capacity of 35.6 gigawatt as on 31st March 2019 and has generated about 52.6 uh, billion units during the year 2017 and 18 and so they again talk about uh, some of the statistics <coughs> and uh, potential of wind energy in India. Wind is an intermittent and site specific resource, resource of energy and therefore an extensive wind resource assessment is essential for the selection of potential sites. The government through National Institute of Wind Energy has installed over 800 wind monitoring stations all over the country and issued wind potential maps at 50 meter, 80 meter and 100 meter above the ground level. The, re the recent assessment indicates the cross wind potential of 302 gigawatt in the country at 100 meter above ground level. Most of this potential exists in seven windy states as given below. Uh, the list is being topped by Gujarat with 84,500 megawatts followed by Rajasthan, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu and Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Andhra, Kerala. Telangana. So all the four, we find all the four southern states uh, forming the part of the peninsula region of India. So in the top 10 and the total comes up 302 gigawatts is being produced. So this is all about, okay, I think this map is not updated yet. Okay, we will go back to the previous years. So install capacity Gujarat is 6004. Rajasthan 4, if you look at Karnataka, it is 4700, adjacent states 4000, 4700, same as Karnataka, and this, Tam this state Tamil Nadu has got 9000. Okay, so Tamil Nadu is the leading producer of wind energy. Alright, so moving on to the next tab, which is small hydro, we will see what the government has here for us. Hydro power projects are classified as large and small hydro power projects based on their sizes. Different countries have different size criteria. 
in India power plants of 25 megawatt or below are classified as small. Anything which has got more than 25 is uh, classified as uh, large and under small they have classified 100 kilowatt or below to micro and on 101 kilowatt to 2 megawatt as mini and small as uh, 2 to 25 megawatt segments <coughs> and uh, so we have some statistics and the estimated potential is 21,000 megawatt from 7,000 sites and the hilly states of India mainly are Arunachal, Himachal, Jammu and Kashmir so all the northern states constitute around half of this potential. Other potential states are Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka and Kerala. So focused attention is given to these uh, states through close interaction monitor etc etc. Alright, so the ministry has again taken a series of uh, steps to promote the development of SHP, small hydro power projects. Alright, let's okay let's see this is Himachal with uh, 911 megawatts in 2020 whereas Karnataka is again uh, leading the table with uh, 1280 megawatts with the adjacent states of Maharashtra 370, Telangana 90, Andhra 160, Tamil Nadu 120 and Kerala 222. So even though the uh, text here said the focus mainly goes to the states hilly states of India uh, <coughs> with majority of the western guards happening here Karnataka is using it to the right potential where we have produced 1280 megawatts in 2020 which is a good sign moving on further to uh, waste to energy let's see what this covers increasing industrialization urbanization and uh, changes in pattern of life etc etc gives rise to generation of increased quantities of waste yes leading through leading to increased threats to the environment recent years technologies have been developed that is not only helping in generating substantial quantity of decentralized energy but also in reducing the quantity of waste for a safe disposal okay so the types of waste uh, which are generated from our daily and industrial activities such as organic waste, e-waste, hazardous waste, inert waste, etc. Okay, organic waste refers to waste which degrades or broken down by microorganisms over time. All organic waste are essentially carbon-based compounds, though they may be diverse in nature and have different degradation rate. Organic waste has sufficient, sorry, significant portion in overall waste generation in industrial, urban, agriculture, agricultural sector and that therefore it can be used for energy gradation. Okay, so organic fraction of the waste can further be classified as bio and uh, non biodegradable and non biodegradable. Biodegradable waste consists of organic that can be used, utilized for food by naturally occurring microorganisms within a reasonable length of time. The biodegradable organic comprise of agro residue, food processing rejections, municipal solid waste, waste from poultry farms, cattle farms, uh, dairy sugar distillery, paper, oil extraction plant, starch processing and leather industries. Non-biodegradable biodegradable organic materials are organics resistant to biological degradation or have very low degradation rate. This primarily includes woody plants, cardboard, cartons, containers, wrappings, pouches, discarded clothing, wooden furniture, agricultural driveways, bagasse, uh, rice husk, etc. Which is, these are the, some of which is used in our uh, biomass. Right, so they are talking about several technologies. So waste to energy technologies to recover the energy from waste in the form of electricity and biogas are given below. So biomethanol is an arrow anaerobic digestion of organic materials which is converted into biogas okay incineration technology is complete combustion of waste with recovery of heat to produce steam that in turn produces power through steam turbines okay gasification is a process that uses high temperatures in the presence of limited amount of oxygen to decompose materials through to produce synthetic gas 
biomass agro residues segregated msw r d f uh, pyrolysis uses heat to break down combustible materials in the absence of oxygen producing a mixture of combustible gases liquids and solid residues okay so potential <coughs> urban solid waste has a potential of this much so the total estimated energy generation potential from urban and industrial organic waste in india is 5690 megawatt uh, this is perhaps not updated we'll go back to the previous year's data so the southern state of tamil nadu has produced 6.4 kerala karnataka 1 andhra pradesh is leading here Maharashtra 12.59, Telangana is still good and okay Delhi has installed a capacity of 52 megawatts which probably is much needed in a city like Delhi and so yeah that is leading out there right so I recommend uh, you can whoever is interested can uh, give a quick read towards all this so that we understand the scenario moving on further to bioenergy <coughs> her biomass has always been an important source of energy for the consider uh, for the country considering the benefits it offers about 32 percent of the total primary primary energy used in the country is derived from biomass and 70 percent of the country's population depending depends upon it for energy needs okay uh, there's a program developed by the government of India. Biomass power and co-generation program is implemented with the main objective of promoting technologies for the optimum use of the country's biomass resources for its grid power generation. Biomass materials used for power generation include bag airs, rice husk, straw, cotton stock, coconut shell, soya husk, de-oiled cakes, coffee waste, jute waste, groundnut shells, sawdust, etc. So, estimated about 500 million metric tons per year is the capacity of biomass that is getting produced which converts to about 18,000, okay, let's read it, surplus studies sponsored by the ministry has estimated a surplus biomass availability of about 120 to 150 metric million metric tons per annum covering agricultural and forestry residues corresponding to a potential of about 18,000 megawatts. So this apart, about 7,000 megawatt additional power could be generated through baggage based co-generation in the countries. 550 sugar mills, if these sugar mills were to adopt technically and economically, optimal levels of co-generation for extracting power from the baggage produced by them. Okay, so there's some there are some details based on <coughs> the technology, combustion, co-generation in sugar mills and deployment. I would recommend you to give it a read and uh, CFA central financial assistance so uh, the government is looking for some of some of uh, the uh, generators to adopt or utilize this assistance given by them okay let's get to the total cap current status the total capacity of around 10,000 has been installed in the in this sector install capacity is 1926 okay install capacity of biomass ipp is 1926 install capacity capacity of baggage cogeneration is 7500 install capacity of non baggage cogeneration is 772 okay and uh, state wise installed okay this is updated till 31 10 2020 let us see if we have the map yes so maharashtra is topping the list followed by 2500 almost 1000 to surprising in spite of having sugar bowl karnataka has uh, not installed anything probably there are something which is proposed but yes so we have uh, maharashtra leading the game followed by tamil nadu and some of the eastern states all right and moving on further uh, we will see what a green energy corridor is okay so this aims at synchronizing and electricity produced from renewable sources such as all this into the grid right so for evacuation of large renewable energy large-scale renewable energy in sts intrastate transmission system was sanctioned by the ministry and implemented 
by eight renewable red states of Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, there are three <coughs> southern states already in this, and the project is being implemented in these states by the respective state transmission utilities. And so we have some of these uh, statistics as on December 31st, 2019. Uh, this is being targeted and this is constructed. So this is almost there. And if we have to take Karnataka, we have almost 150 such kilometer left. So this is I N S T S, and this is the interstate transmission system. Okay. Right. So yes, so this is our green energy corridors, and we will quickly know what they have to say under uh, new technologies. Okay. So the projects are helping in the development of indigenous research. Okay. So what is ocean energy? Ocean energy has a as per a study conducted by IIT Chennai in association water. Okay. The tidal power potential is estimated to be around. 12,500 megawatts. The potential areas with lower uh, medium tidal wave strength is found in several Gulf region in Gujarat and some uh, channels in Tamil Nadu and Hubli River and Sundarbans in West Bengal. Tidal energy is still in research and development stage phase and not been implemented on a commercial scale in India. The earlier efforts for harnessing tidal power were not successful due to high capital cost ranging from 30 crore to 60 crore per megawatt okay we go back and find what is the next thing hydrogen energy mnre has been supporting broad based research development okay projects are supported in industrial academic and research institutions to address challenges in production of hydrogen from renewable energy sources okay a major work has been done by several institutes okay two hydrogen refueling refueling stations have been established at okay in and around delhi and uh, some of these buses based on the research some of these mini buses are, are not hydrogen fuel okay so this is still under the r d stage Geothermal sources, resources in India have been mapped by GSA Geological Survey of India. Broad estimates suggest that there could be 10 gigawatt geothermal power potential. Present efforts are towards establishing cost competitive geothermal potential in India. Okay, this is still in development stage. Energy storage can play a very important role. <coughs> okay, by increasing the system's overall flexibility, it can improve power quality, reduce peak demand, enhance capacity of distribution, transmission grids, avoid or reduce deviation penalties, etc. Use of energy storage by various consumers in conjunction with energy renewable energy has potential to improve power quality, reliability for such consumers. So, okay, this again in the development stage. So we are talking about storing energy and utilizing it according to the needs so we spoke we saw about uh, indian context from the ministry's website and in the next session we will uh, try to identify uh, how to use all this towards producing net zero buildings and also about energy conservation and electricity usage thank you